Good morning friends. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to welcome all of you to this program organized by the National Center for School Leadership. As you all know that the school education in India has expanded very fast and tremendous expansion that has taken place. One can say that the primary education or even the elementary education is almost universalized in terms of access and the progress that you have made in terms of creating schooling facilities and facilities in the school are substantial. One initially it was a question of establishing schools and appointing teachers. Later it became necessary to facilitate, create facilities within the school textbooks to the students and also of training the teachers. Essentially, we have moved substantially to a situation of self-sufficiency in terms of enrollment. But the challenge of education, school education in India does not end there. It's a starting stage. While equality has been achieved in terms of enrolling children, we are far away from achieving equality in terms of learning achievement. I think the basic challenge that the schooling system in India faces is that schooling without learning, which is really a great danger for the future generation, which will have harm, harmful effects for the next generation when they come to the employment, market, etc. I think we need to make a distinction between schooling for all and learning for all. We have to trans we have to move a move from providing schooling facilities and schooling children to a situation of learning. So I think the best way to do that is that we have to see that learning becomes a necessary condition that is focused, that is targeted well in the school system. We have seen that several efforts that have been done in the past have been very successful in bringing children to the schools and retaining them. However, when it comes to the levels of student learning, we have not achieved what we should. I think the basic difference between the 20th century and 21st century is that in the 20th century, especially the second half of the 20th century, we were talking about schooling all the children. But today we are talking about learning for all children. And this means that we have to transform the schools and institutions into learning organizations. Now, when the schools were conceived, they were conceived as teaching organizations and teaching institutions. Now we have to see them as learning organizations. Therefore, the challenge before the education planners and educational administrators is to how to transform schools from a teaching institution to a learning institution. And the learning becomes meaningful when the all children Gets, gets the benefit or in other words the gains from learning are more equally distributed among all children belonging to all groups. This has a lot of implications. We find that empirical studies and analysis have clearly indicated that schools with the same levels of resources, not only financial resources but also teacher resources with a similar students coming from similar family background but they perform very differently in terms of learner achievement. So what is the source of this performance difference if the facilities in the schools are more or less the same and if the socio-economic background of the children are more or less similar and what it means is that there is something in terms of the schooling processes which varies these processes very widely. And what is the source of this variation? That is the place where we come to the role of school leadership 
and what a leader of a school, a head teacher or a principal of a school can do. I think we have come to a conclusion, especially in the context of India, since we had the Operation Bo Blackboard strategies from 1986 onwards, where we defined teaching learning conditions and try to provide facilities to the schools. We are in a situation whereby we are trying to see that how the school leadership can be strengthened and how the schools can be made more effective. Or in other words, it is not only school improvement, but also creating effective schools through effective leadership of the school, school leadership. That becomes the major concern and priority for action in the country. This was recognized in India, at least in the past century, in the previous century, the past decade, not century, sorry, in the past decade and in the in the wake of or in the context of the 12th five-year plan they started an initiative they started an initiative to establish a center for training teachers and leaders for leadership positions in the schools you know that is how in 2012 the national center for school leadership was established in nepal this center conducts a large scale, large number of research and also has produced a substantially very good quality. Very good quality means comparable to the world standards. Very good quality material for training of school heads and the principals of the schools in different, in different states and also at the national level. They conduct several training programs and they have developed a curriculum framework for uh, development of uh, school leadership uh, in the Indian context, taking into account varying contexts in which the schools function. One of the advantages of these programs is that the center has taken into account the varying context in the sense that of urban schools, of rural schools, remote rural areas, schools which are located in the predominantly in the areas which are occupied by disadvantaged groups, they have taken into account this. And as a result of that, many of the training materials, booklets published by them are also translated into or modified and go translated into different Indian languages. It is not only from English to Hindi, but also many regional languages. That shows a stage in the process of uh, enrichment of these programs and reaching these programs to the most wanted areas or most demanded areas and the most deprived regions, you know. NCL is, NCSL is also launching an intermediate level program, online program on school leadership and management on the Moodle platform. The objective of this course is to enable the school heads to become change leaders in their schools and lead their schools towards transformation while adopting the principles of inclusion, equity and quality uh, in the context of the new education policy. I would like to underline this fact that NCSL takes into account the expansion of the education and the increasing diversity, especially the student diversity that is entering into the scene. The major challenge that the country faces is that how do we maintain quality if not improve quality when the student body gets diversified substantially. This di addressing this diversity issue becomes more important at the school level and also at the system level. The NCSL has been very successful in organizing, addressing these issues through their most of their training programs. And I think the new program that is uh, offered now also covers seven key areas and that is also meant to further reconfirm, strengthen and reinforce academic, administrative and many managerial capabilities to provide and to develop, to provide an opportunity for development of effective leadership in the schools. Therefore, the, this program is 
open to all school heads who have successfully completed the basic level of online program and i am sure that this program will be utilized by the school heads and it will be of uh, very good help as part of the continuous professional development process that is taking place let me end by saying that how schools can be improved how learning gains can be democratized and how the schools can transit from teaching institutions to learning institutions and what is the role of a school leader or a principal what is the role of a school leader or when do we say a leader is effective it is not that when a leader is effective when the schools are running properly but it's also a situation where schools are running more orderly but also it is reflected in terms of improved learning achievements among the children that forms the basis for measuring measuring assessing school leadership qualities and also big schools becoming an effective instrument what we call as school effectiveness becomes a priority and school leadership becomes a necessary crucial element in the process of developing and uh, uh, envisaging school as effective organizations promoting learning achievements